Hello and welcome back to Metro Ball Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. We got a new deck for you today. This is Speed Diver, a Sable Deep Dive deck. And very importantly, this is a startup deck. So in short, this is a very one dimensional and what I would actually risk calling a cheesy deck. It has a one game plan and one game plan only. So hopefully that game plan works out. And that's based around this card, Deep Dive, one of the strongest cards that's been printed in the Midnight Sun set. And it is what a lot of people classically call a quest completed event. It's an event you can only play after you've made a successful run on Archives, HQ, and R&D all in the same turn. And if you do that and play Deep Dive, you get a look at the top eight cards of the Corpse deck, they technically see them too, and you can choose to access one of them. Now, if you can spend an additional click, you can actually access a second card, so you can end up stealing potentially two agendas in that single event, which is obviously quite powerful. Now, this is a five influence card, and the idea with this is we're running three of them because we want to be deep diving as aggressively and as consistently and as quickly as possible, and I think we can pull it off. Now, a big thing you must understand about this card is that if you run R&D, HQ, and Archives and then play this event, that is already four clicks. So being able to spend an additional click that turn to access an additional card is actually really quite daunting, and it's kind of tricky, mind you, in the startup format. But that's why we are playing the new criminal. This is Sable and Sable plays with the mark mechanic once per turn or at the beginning of each turn, one central server randomly is going to become your mark. And if you run that successfully, you gain a click back. And this is really important. If we're going to be running every single central server anyways to get a deep dive off, we will be having a five click turn to easily play deep dive and see additional card. So that's why we're at Sable. Admittedly, she's not a shaper. So we're going to be spending again all of our influence on three copies of deep dive. But again, we can do this quickly and consistently and it's hard for the corp to interact with this. On top of the clicks, another really important card in the setup is Swift. This is a blue console that came from the Ashes cycle, and while the MU doesn't actually matter on this, it's more so that once per turn, the first time per turn, that we play a run event, we get a click back. Which means if we run all three central servers with Sable, we get our successful run on our mark, and we played a run event while doing that, we're going to have a six click turn, which means we can actually deep dive twice which is potentially possible to steal three agendas in a single turn and maybe even win uh, as soon as probably not turn one. I do think you can deep dive on turn one, but you can win pretty quickly as long as you can set up consistently and have enough credits. So that's what we're doing. Setting up Swift, running our mark and deep diving. Now to go through the rest of the deck, we have a lot of events. I'll just run through everything as it matters. Blueberry Diesel is technically not a very good card advantage card, but it's a card that I'm finding myself playing in more decks that have redundancy. Like we don't want to draw into our extra copies of our breakers or sometimes even our breakers at all in the early game, but we don't want to draw into our extra console, but we do want to draw into very specific cards. We want to be drawing into our, of course, our deep dives, our swifts, and some of the other ways that we can bypass and get around ice. So I'm actually really enjoying Blueberry Diesel in this sort of aggressive list that wants to set up. We have three bravado. Not much has to be said about this. It's a run event that gives you credits. All that stuff works really well with both the mark mechanic and the fact that we're playing Swift. We have three Carpe Diem, a very good mark card that on its own, if you play this with Swift, it's just gain three credits, gain a click. But if you're also running your mark and sometimes your mark will be uniced in the early game, like archives or R&D, that's two clicks back off of this. Incredibly powerful with Swift and um, and Sable. We talked about the deep dives. We have three dirty laundries. Not much again to be said here. It's an econ card that gets you clicks back. Fantastic. We have three inside job. And this is really important because a fair part of our deck is uh, our cards that allow us to interact and get through break or bypass ice without having to find the appropriate breaker from our deck, install the breaker, and then have enough credits to interface and break subroutines. There are so many ways in criminal that allow you to aggressively deal with ice in the early game or the mid game potentially and not have to have breakers. And the idea is that breakerlessly we can actually pretty simply deep dive especially on in the first couple turns of the game where the ice is not too thick on central servers so three inside job is a must we have two jailbreak this is actually new to the deck the first couple games i played after this uh don't actually have two jailbreak in the deck they were running i think three copies of class act and three copies of black backstitching i cut two of those resources to add two jailbreak to the deck and i actually really quite like this it can be sometimes hard to try and steal all your agendas off of deep dives so having a bit of incidental multi-access on central servers is quite good if you can steal an agenda early if r d or hq is not iced up well and you're getting those free mark runs anyways it really uh lowers the amount of pressure you have on your deep dives to convert and just stealing one agenda in the early game does totally change your game plan and how quick the game is on top of that this is a card draw card clicklessly mind you click plus if you're running either swift or your mark so it works out really really quite well and i'm actually very happy with this inclusion 
On top of that, we have two mutual favor. This card works really well with Sable. Sometimes you're clicklessly running archives, might as well pull your breakers. And we'll talk about the breakers in a bit, but importantly, in this deck, a lot of times you do not want to install your breakers if you don't need them. We have don't have a robust economy, and that's very much worth saying. This deck has a very limited economy. It does not have economy that will scale into the mid to late game, so we need to aggressively deep dive sooner than later. And this card, in a pinch, sometimes you do need to get your breakers, but not always. So a lot of times you can end up bottling this card with your filter draw. Um, um, but in a pinch, really quite good. We have a single copy of Pinhole Threading, another new Midnight Sun card, of course, a run event that can give you a click back, but you can use this card to trash things in the remote server that a lot of times we're not going to spend too much time running because we are a bit focused on centrals. There are a lot of cards right now in uh, in startup or standard that if you can trash them um, are a really big deal for the corp, whether it's a corp having a regolith mining license in a remote server where all their money is tied into that. Bring that down. We're worrying now about things like Drago Ivanov, which left unchecked can really be a problem. So pinhole threading is an incredibly powerful card. You can also use this by like running archives to trash potentially um, uh, uh, an upgrade that's protecting R&D or HQ to allow your other runs to go through successfully, which is a really important on a deep dive turn. And finally, we have Sure Gamble, very solid economy. Not much has to be said about this. In terms of the hardware, we talked about the three Swift, but we also have three Boomerang, a really powerful card that allows us to deal with ice without finding our breakers and spending a lot of money. Now, this card's a bit tricky. A lot of times I found myself in the in the following games that I would install this last click just to make sure that I have enough clicks on my turn to be able to run everything and deep dive. But if you're installing this last click on a piece of ice, you're giving the corporation an entire turn to be able to either trash that ice or install more ice on that server. So you're not just like clicklessly or not clicklessly, but creditlessly running R&D and boomeranging the one ice on it. So while I don't love that play pattern, it's actually not too necessary. The fact that you're getting clicks back with Sable and both um, Swift, ideally, if you're set up uh, appropriately, uh, you can actually spend your first click on a turn installing boomerang and then making three runs and still having two clicks left for um, for the deep dive. So keep that in mind. I don't think the way that I play this was too good in some of the following games. In terms of resources, we have two backstitching, another really good way to deal with ice without having to find breakers. We are playing with the mark mechanic anyways. Why not slip through some ice? Uh, hopefully your mark is where it needs to be, but maybe you just wait a turn. We have three daily casts. Again, economy in this deck is not robust. We only have so many econ cards before we're stuck to clicking for credits. Get this down as soon as you can generally, and it doesn't require any more clicks, so you'll get the five credits off of it soon enough. Then we have two class act as our last resources. Very powerful card. Not only does it give you burst draw the turn that it's installed, but from that point on, every turn, it gives you filtered card draw, which we talked about how important that is. We have extra redundant cards that we don't want to draw into. But on top of that, we uh, we definitely need to find our deep dives quickly. We need to find our back stitchings, our boomerangs, our inside jobs. And finally, we have the program suite, which is just icebreakers. These icebreakers are not very good. They're not very robust icebreakers. They're not the most efficient icebreakers in the format, but they're icebreakers that we can afford cheaply to get down early if we need to. And we have enough money to be able to break one or two ice on the turns that we're deep diving. Again, there are a lot of games where you're not going to have to install these. Firstly, Cat's Cradle costs two credits, comes down early, has an economic tax to the corporation, and it's the numbers on it are not too bad. If you end up breaking one or two code gates, you can generally afford to do that. We have two Marjana, which comes down for zero. So again, not too big of a speed bump if you want to pre-install this. It's not very good at breaking with barriers, let alone high strength barriers is kind of a nightmare, but ideally you don't get to that point. But you don't sweat the small stuff, which can be quite nice and save your boomerangs and your, um, your uh, inside jobs. We also have two revolvers, which falls into the same camp. It's not tenacious. It only has so many bullets before you end up throwing it. But getting this down early allows you to face check pretty aggressively and not have to deal with the scariest ice in the format. And it's pretty cheap, too. You're generally only paying two credits to break most sentries in most cases and a couple bullets. So that's fantastic. And that's generally the list. We have a fair bit of card draw. We have just enough economy. We have really cheap breakers if we need to get down, but ideally you're not. And you can deep dive once, twice a game and hopefully steal some agendas off of the increased central pressure of Sable. We didn't talk about her ability, but it's worth knowing that if you just get like an R&D mark turn one, might as well run it if it's not iced. You're going to get the click back anyways, so try and get those accesses to make sure you're stealing some agendas early so you don't have to deep dive every single point. Now, as a corp, there's a lot of ways to fight back against this sort of deck. It is, again, what I would call a bit of a cheesy deck. If the corporation sees you coming and just decides to triple ice every central server, it's going to be a problem. But a lot of times corps don't do that. They realize they need to score out and otherwise HQ agendas are going to flood in it. Cards like defensive upgrades, I find out are actually quite strong against this deck. And I would say even stronger a lot of times than ice. We can deal with ice, but it's hard for us to deal with cards like this that are expensive to deal with and then also have a trash cost that's 
kind of expensive. On top of that, just a simple Chrysium grid is a nightmare. If the runs are not considered successful, not only do we not get a lot of our run event triggers, I suppose it's mostly like dirty laundry, but we don't get our mark back from Sable. So it's hard to get that, um, that deep dive if the run is not considered successful. And another really important thing to understand with this deck, while this seems like a combo deck where you can just set up, get down your backstitchings and boomerangs and then deep dive, it is so important when you're playing this deck, and mind you, most criminals ever, to always consider face checking into ice to force the corporation to pay credits. This is Ballista, which is not a very popular ice in standard from what I, or in startup from what I've seen. But the idea is that if you run HQ because your mark is there, the corporation might want to pay five credits just to end the run. So you're not getting a clickless run and maybe stealing an agenda or trashing an important part of their game plan. So do be aggressive. I know we don't have breakers all the time, but do start running into things to make sure that the corporation is spending credits so they don't feel comfortable. So it's harder for them to play their economy cards and then they have less time to to jam out remote uh, agendas in a remote server or ice up their stuff a bit better. And of course, really important too, if your deck is running it, damage is a nightmare for this deck. If you are running central servers because you have to, to deep dive and you take net damage on the way, you're probably going to lose your deep dive. So if you are playing that damage, you are going to have a better matchup against a deep dive deck for sure. That's largely the deck. This is our pretty one dimensional deep dive um, Sable deck. It does work. You can be aggressive and a lot of times you can close the game out faster than they can protect up their centrals. So give it a shot. Let me know what you think about it. And the games are just about coming up. Cheers. Hey, all right. Welcome back to Match Ball Grid. My name's Andre. Today we're playing Startup. We're playing a really cheesy deck uh, today. This is a speed diving Sable. We're playing against a PD deck that can be pretty fast and efficient. Only 40 cards. We have 45. And our deck, we spend 15 influence on three deep dives. We're trying to deep dive to win. That's basically all our strat is. Just very singularly get six clicks at a turn and hopefully double deep dive. Our opening hand here is actually pretty okay. We can sure gamble into cast into class act. Uh, maybe we can run R&D for free if the mark lands where it is. Uh, but we're just trying to kind of do that one thing and hopefully we can do it well. I can keep this. It's kind of like a bit dodgy. Like we really want to draw into a deep dive or a swift. Those are really important. But I feel like we got enough economy and a class act early so we can't complain. And we're off Michael Mann on precision design. So they can have six cards uh, in hand in HQ and they generally go pretty quickly. Uh, that whenever they score an agenda, they can return a card from archives to hand. So seamless launch means any 4-2 can be scored really aggressively. Server 1, no idea what that is. We're hoping for an R&D here. It's archives. Can't get a lot of value out of that. So we can sure gamble. This is going to cost us 7 credits, so I really don't want to run server 1. I'm not really sure. I don't play too much startup. This is worth saying. I don't play a lot of startup, so I'm not too sure where the threats can be on the table. I'm assuming this is probably a Nico or a Marilyn, which we don't care about so much. So I'm just going to install these two and click for a credit. I don't want to draw because we get filtered draw off the class act if we haven't drawn yet. So we can put one of these on the bottom. We have a Carpe Diem, another Daily Cast, an Inside Job, and a Boomerang. Um, honestly, I think the Boomerang is probably the worst. We already have one in hand. It does let us contest the remote server, but we're trying to be as singular as possible on central servers. And we have some good money here. We'll be able to sure gamble. Hopefully we can Carpe Diem, R&D, or HQ. If that's where our mark is, that'd be fantastic. But we still have three deep dive and 36 cards. And we want to draw generally two of them because it's actually pretty easy for us to play two in the same turn. I worry that we're going to have to score a couple of agendas in the same turn uh, with deep dive. Like, I'm not sure what the PD is running. Probably only four twos. I don't know if there's any five threes, whether they're playing. There's no five threes in HB and startup, is there? Tranquility, home grid and the remote server. Definitely want to pull that down at some point. It gives a lot of free money. Just a lot of click compression. Ice and the remote server, server one. And here, if they have a seamless launch, they can score up pretty aggressively. So hopefully they're doing that and not icing R&D. Uh, they drew last click. Now let's get an R&D mark. Hey, we have it. So let's go ahead and get our free draw. Well, sure, Gamble. Carpe Diem to gain four and run R&D. Why not? It's clickless. We do want to make sure we always have one run event in hand when we do go off for our deep dive because we are going to be uh, get, trying to get a click with Swift. It's a Hagen. Barrier end the run. Not too bad. Clicklessly get an access. So we can draw here, see two cards. There's the Swift. We need the Swift. Revolver's pretty good. Uh, admittedly, we have two inside job and a boomerang in hand, but Revolver definitely does help against drafters and uh, on cells. Uh, but we're going to take the Swift. Ordering there was a bit bad, honestly. We could have got the Swift down and then got the free run with Carpe Diem. So we'll draw once more. And it's either installing a backstitching or a daily cast. Our money looks pretty good. The backstitching gives us that pressure. This card doesn't do too much. Um, you need to pre-install it largely. I guess, no, that's not true. But if we want a deep dive, we need this pre-installed because we can't spend a click to install cards on our deep dive turn. So if we draw into deep dive, hopefully two of them, uh, we're actually good to go. We can just run all central servers. Uh, we need to uh, inside job. Even if there's no ice, we'll inside job to get a click from the Swift. We have to install the Swift first. That is actually quite important. 
They didn't do anything with server one. We do have one pinhole threading if we have to deal with a mana garm or something like that. It's a card I cut out of this list. That's probably the Hagen. Honestly, if they pay money to res a Hagen, we're pretty okay with it. If they hit a drafter here, it's a bit uglier, but I think we'll face check into a Hagen and force them to res, especially if our mark is on R&D again. They have also been drawing last in, later in the turn, which you generally want to be drawing first so that you could get a better ice to put on R&D. So if this is not an agenda in server one, I think pressuring HQ is actually pretty reasonable here. Archives, unfortunately, is our mark, which can't get a lot of value out of that. We'll just run HQ here first click. We have no breakers. We're not worried about roto turret or anything that trashes breakers. Uh, drafter, that's fine. Uh, they can let that fire so they can install a card. They can also add a card from archives to HQ. Could just be a sure gamble or a hedge fund. Sorry, that's the only thing that's in there. But that's not too bad. We made them spend some money and now we can get an access. We definitely want to draw this turn. We probably should have drawn first, honestly. Um, there's no Fairchild 3 in startup. I'm worried about standard where you want to run sooner than later in a turn. And let's see if they install something here. They got to install in the Tranquility Home Grid. It's pretty good because they get two credits. They didn't get value off of this last turn. But yeah, you just got to face check. You got to make them spend money. Unseen card from HQ getting installed. Where? Oh, server two. Okay, cool. Get an access here. If that is an ice, looks like it's an ice, we can get an access on HQ. That might more likely be an agenda. It's a seamless launch. Okay. Here, I think we might want to consider running server one, uh, just because that might actually be an agenda. I don't know if they've just been icing up centrals and we've been pressuring them out. We can consider our inside jobbing server one. It honestly might not be the wrong thing to do. We have a boomerang and a backstitching. I think we can just inside job server one, honestly. Let's get the swift down first. We have enough money to also trash something here. This is a mana garm we can just bounce, but now this is clickless because Swift says the first time a turn you play a run event to gain a click back. Does, the run doesn't need to be successful, which is pretty great. We might have just wanted to run this like directly to see if they would res because here they probably won't res. And I want to give them to spend money, especially because we know they have a hedge fund in hand. So if they spend like four credits resing a Hagen, uh, their next turn gets a bit uglier. Let's see if they res here. They don't really need to. There's actually really not that much of a reason. Let's get an agenda to send a message. Whoa, three pointer. Um, okay. Now they get to res something for free. There is an on-sell 1.0, so not the best res when we are inside jobbing it. Are we going to trash the Tranquility? If we do, hmm, I don't think we do. We do have to worry about a punitive counter-strike potentially, so we want to make sure that we have enough money here. So putting down the daily cast is a bit dodgy because it actually costs us money. I think just getting another bravado is pretty good. We could bravado R&D here. Oh, we could also wait till next turn when we have um, our swift click. So I'm just going to keep drawing it. Eight credits were pretty safe from um, a potentially punitive counter strike, which is a, a really good card to play with three pointers, especially if people are not expecting them. Because this turn, Michael Mann can easily have 12 credits if they play their um, sure gamble. Or excuse me, hedge fund. So maybe it's actually right to click for a credit here. But at least now we can win in two agenda steals. So even a single deep dive could do it. Card and server two, fully operational. Ooh, I don't see this a lot in, um, in PD decks, but they're going to get good value from this. This lets them repeat this ability for every ice remote server they have. They did put something in server two. We know they have a seamless launch in hand. We know there's probably a Hagen on R&D or server two and a card in server one. Going to give them two more credits. We have, they have a seamless. Like we kind of have to just go. We have 10 credits. Our mark is HQ. So if we wanted to like just run HQ this turn with backstitching, we could. We can also do it clicklessly. Like we can just bravado HQ here, bypass with backstitching. Um, this card's a really good setup for a deep dive turn. Let's see if we can get a deep dive sooner than later. Move a card to the bottom of the stack. Pinhole threading. Well, we move the pinhole threading to the bottom. And then we have a Bravado, deep dive, and a Mariana. Uh, Mariana definitely deals with um, what is on R&D, which is probably a Hagen. Um, it's very expensive, mind you. Um, I don't think we need the Mariana. We have boomerangs inside jobs and um, our backstitching. So we're just going to get the we're gonna get the deep dive in hand this turn. Now, here, we could definitely consider Bravadoing R&D. If they res a Hagen, we're pretty happy. I think we can just go ahead and do that. It's clickless. Uh, if we want to run HQ, we're going to have to spend our backstitching, but we're set up to deep dive next turn. We can actually win potentially next turn. Uh, if we draw into another deep dive, it would be even better. We can draw once more here. Okay, well, I guess we're bravadoing. And if this is the Hagen, the Hagen doesn't do anything besides end the run for four credits because it trashes a non-typed uh, icebreaker. Yeah, there's a the Hagen. That's fantastic. So that trashes the decoder, fractor, or killer. That's fine. We just got clicklessly three credits and forced them to res. Got some information. Uh, so that's not too bad at all. It might have been right to boomerang here. It does shuffle our deck if we wanted to, and we know the cards on the bottom of the deck. They're not really things that we want. Um, but this doesn't cost a click. Like, we could boomerang HQ and then bravado HQ. Um, boomerang's also kind of nice just to set up if we want to set up onto one of these ice. We'd want to do it sooner than later. Then we just have to hope that our mark is on the other card of that turn. Uh, daily cast, the credits are not that important. We're going to be at 15 credits next turn. Um, we don't have any breakers, so we can't really use the credits. So we could just like do Boomerang HQ Bravado. Ugh, don't love it. 
think we can just maybe we just play daily casts or down on the bottom of the deck. We can just install a boomerang. I don't love this. And then just install a cast, whatever. They can react to this. They can interact with this. Like we put a boomerang and gave them a whole turn to over install, install a second ice, stuff like that. Um, so we'll see. Ideally, oh, it's a Nico. That's fine. That's going to take the remote for a couple turns. So we're not too worried about that. But ideally, that we keep our mark on HQ so that we can back stitching the drafter. Interestingly enough, as long as they don't install a defensive upgrade with the drafter, we can actually just run through this on a deep dive turn because it doesn't end the run. Obviously, it's good for them. Seamless means they're going to score out in server two. That's good. That means they're probably not going to install more ice unless it's a luminal transubstantiation. And it is. <laughs> so they have uh, four more clicks, if I'm not mistaken. And they get to return a card from hand. They're returning a fully operational, which is going to give them some card draw. Oh, that's a nightmare. That is, if they just got seven credits there off of like a, an off-world office, I think we'd be pretty happy. It's going to give them more cards or credits. The fully operational getting them good value. I wonder if we should just ran server two last turn. Maybe we should have. We could have just bravadoed server two, honestly. I don't care about their ice too much. You just don't want to do it too late in the turn because if you hit a drafter like late, last click, they can just install an agenda on the table safely because you're not going to be able to run it. Drawing more, drawing more credits. So now they can ice up centrals. They have eight credits, so they could res a fair bit here. They probably want to ice up R&D. I feel like the boomerang play was probably wrong. I don't like what we did there. Another card in server one looks like a, an upgrade. It has to be an upgrade. So they are going to get two credits for a card draw and another card in remote server. So we can go ahead and deep dive this turn. I don't think there's anything that's going to stop us. I'd love to have an Earthrise Hotel or like clickless card draw. I think we should consider that in the deck just because our clicks are so spent doing our thing. And R&D is our mark. No, that's fine. That's actually quite fine. So there's a small chance we can win here. We're going to have to play run events. So it looks like we're going to inside job HQ. They drew a lot of cards. Um, there's a chance there's an agenda on the table. And if they're playing around a deep dive, getting an agenda on the table is actually a smart place to put it. But maybe we can win here. <laughs> so let's go ahead and inside job our HQ. This will not only be clickless. Well, it'll give us a click back. So it is clickless. Then we can just boomerang our R&D. Oh, we'll actually bravado R&D. And we can either use the boomerang at the back stitching. Might as well use the boomerang. An agenda here would be fantastic, like most runs. I don't think we mind. Oh, it's an off-world office. Wow, okay. So I think there's a big chance we're going to be able to win off of this deep dive. So heal will bravado R&D. Uh, we got a click back from our Swift because we did play to run event. This, you don't actually need to play the bravado here. Trash, no. We won't bypass that. We're going to use our boomerang because there's two subroutines there. Shuffle's our deck. We don't mind too much about the shuffle. It's so a Tranquility Home Grid. If we trash this, we actually see an additional card when we deep dive. So I'm going to go ahead to trash it, even though inherently it doesn't matter if they draw that. So we still have four clicks. So we can run archives, deep dive, access two cards in theory. Uh, woof. Full, whiff, on sell, brand, drafter, two fully ops, hedge fund, magnet, mana garden, skunk works. Oh, not good. Woof. Okay. That happens sometimes, huh? That makes me think there's agendas on the table. Uh, we can access and trash one of these. I don't really want to. We have, no, thank you. We have two clicks left. We generally want to draw to get our, like, uh, our value draw. But I think I'm going to run server two here and force a res. What's the worst case here? An unsell is not too bad. We can click through the trash a thing thing uh, subroutine with the byroid. There's one that trashes an installed card, if I'm not mistaken. What if they return to hand? Probably a seamless, right? Oh, it's a magnet. That's fine. It's an under run. And here we'll just do a filter draw last click. So it's either a Carpe Diem or a Daily Cast. Our money's pretty good. We'll take the Carpe Diem. It's a run event, which is really quite nice here. Okay, so we have no other multi-axis in this deck. I was thinking of playing Jailbreaks just so that we could like be a bit more aggressive and draw at the same time. Our marks haven't been very good. We got Archive marks a fair bit, and this deck does not uh, interact well with Archive marks. So we're going to have to win off something else. They can probably score here. I think they, they might still have a Seamless in hand. The deck generally runs three of them, and they've already uh, they've played one. Oh, it's all good. Um, and we know this shuffles, mind you. After you deep dive, you shuffle the top eight cards. So they're going to draw unknown cards. They're not going to draw whatever was on the top of Brawn or an Uncell. But we only need a single agenda. And the rest are running, running Bifurcation, um, which I doubt they are. So I might go mandatory draw there. Server two and server three, unknown. I um, wonder if like, server three could just be like a Trieste model Byroids, which would be a pretty terrifying if we want to ever click through the Uncell. In terms of our tricks, we still have three boomerangs in the deck. We have one inside job. I don't think we have any always have a backup plan that was in the deck. And we have two more copies also of backstitching, which if they're only single icing their central servers, doesn't really matter that much. Hey, well, speak of that. So now we're going to need to get breakers. We were hoping to get lucky off of that. Seamless launch. Where's that going? Whoa, seamless launch click two. You don't see that often. Maybe that's an Elvigor El bifurcation. I don't actually know what the first word is in that agenda. And Vitruvi's on advance. Okay, cool. So they tempoed out a nice on R&D. That's pretty cool. 
So now they're technically on game point, seeing that they are running send a messages, and they can return a card from archives to their hand using their ability. And they return to Seamus launch. So server three, in theory, could be the winning agenda. It's unlikely. I don't think we're going to want to check it. Archives is our mark, so we can always Carpe Diem to gain a uh, click and gain three credits. Pretty good. Uh, here we have a Boomerang or a Cat's Cradle. So far, no code gates on central servers. And next turn, their Ancel is going to be uh, like free. So I don't think we generally want to like break the magnet. Boomerang is a bit more flexible. So we can keep drawing here. Revolver is a really, really good way to deal with Ancel. I'm going to Carpe Diem Archives because we still have a Bravado set up if we need a Swift into, um, into our... Uh, deep dive and this is again gain a click off of your running your successful mark and then gain a click off of swift so we still have three clicks in a turn it's pretty wild which means like we can even install a boomerang in theory and then go off on our uh, combo turn another class act actually probably is worth installing mind you this is the unique card but you can always install this trashing the old one just to draw a lot uh and then next turn we'll have 11 credits that's a lot you can draw once more that's what we need okay so here we could consider installing class act or we consider installing a breaker I think we could value getting the revolver here down on the table because if this lands on anything besides archives, uh, if this one's on our R&D, we're in a good spot. It's either the class hack or the revolver. I think we're going to play the revolver here just so that we can deal with the drafter and we can threaten server one. We'll see. They have a seamless in hand. If they have two seamless, they can install a 5-3 agenda and not have to advance it. And then it actually is like pretty risky here. But uh, we are set up to do deep dive next turn. This gets through the, the sentry, the, um, the drafter. The big question mark is R&D. Like in theory, there's a chance we'll have to boomerang one and then backstitching the other. It's just like so important right now that backstitching or our mark, excuse me, is on R&D this turn. There are no ways in this game to move your mark. So whatever uh, Sable rolls, that's kind of what we have to roll with. They're drawing up eight cards in hand. Mind you, they do have six hand size. We don't have a lot of this is like def very different than standard where like you can't diversion of funds to slow the game down. Something behind the magnet again could be the winning agenda. They have two seamless in hand and they have a click left here. They could have installed on top of the Tranquility Home Grid. They chose not to. So that kind of makes sense considering we can break down cell and we currently can't break the magnet. We could always like boomerang the magnet and check it. Um, and they've been like pretty confident scoring behind a single piece of ice. Okay, that's a bit of a problem, but now at least the backstitching is a bit more flexible. It's on HQ. Shit. What will it take to combo off here? I don't think we can. If we run HQ, we can always backstitching the outermost. We can revolve with the innermost, but then we still have to deal with a Hagen um that we can't deal with at all and an unknown ice so i think we're just gonna have to boomerang server two and we're gonna have to draw into something else we'll have to draw into an inside job we'll have to draw into more breakers a um, mutual favor would also be quite nice we don't want to play the bravado to check server two because we're going to need it we're, we're straight up going to need it if we uh, need to get a click back because of swift Ah, uh, we don't need it considering we'll win in one agenda would be nice let's draw it's an inside job or a mutual favor Ooh, this is quite interesting actually because even if we inside job R&D, we're going to need the mutual favor for the Marjana. The inside job is obviously quite good. Inside job lets us clicklessly check server two, which is nice as well. But mutual favor means that we can actually install our breakers. Um, oh, I think we're going to have to install breakers in this game. Yeah, it's a bummer. Okay, so we can like boomerang, run server two, run archives, install a breaker. I don't think we have enough clicks for that. So we boomerang server two, check it. I think that's how we... Nah, it has to be a 5-3 for us to lose. And they have to double seamless it. We know they have one seamless. There's another one in the bin, so maybe it's unlikely. But if we run archives, we can mutual favor down a Marjana. We could hope that this isn't a magnet. I think if we get a Marjana down, we're like 100% can deep dive next turn. Credits willing. Because unless this is on archives, if this mark lands on archives next turn, then we have a real problem on our hands. I don't think we're checking this. Oh, wow. Okay. It might not have been right to draw there. So we'll install the Marjana because we made a successful run. We have the Cat's Cradle in hand, which we can install for two credits. So hopefully we don't lose right now. But if we get this breaker down, we'll have three clicks left. And then as long as money is willing, we can run everything. If this lands on anything besides archives, I think we're pretty happy. And we have to make sure that we run successfully first so we don't have to pay more money on the Hagen. I'm pretty sure they would have just windmilled out the seamlesses if they had them. But our breaker suite is like not very uh, tenacious. It's like very cheap and efficient. Um, and not efficient, excuse me. It's just a, oh sh shit. Did we lose? Please don't double seamless it. Oh, thank God. Okay, so they're gonna get seven credits off of the off-world office. And back to us. So they're definitely on game point. Server three, we still don't know what it is. Could be a Trieste model Byroids. I think just about anything else they would have rezzed. I'm very confused what server three is. You have 13 credits, which is a fair bit. Getting close to that big deal money. 
and they return to seamless launch to hand. So server three could be the agenda. Server one, I'm pretty sure we know it's an upgrade. They have to discard a card here, but now it's all dependent on where a mark lands. Anything besides archives is, I think, potentially fantastic. Please don't upset us. Please, Sable. R&D. Okay, cool. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So it's on R&D. No matter what, we have to run archives. So we can run archives to make the Marjana cheaper. Then we can bravado R&D. We can backstitching through this, and then we can break that one for four credits. We'll make money off of the, the bravado. We'll have two clicks left. At that point, we can install the boomerang on the outermost. There's no border control in this format. We can run it, hope it doesn't have more than two subroutines. We'll shoot this. I think we're okay, but we have to do this in perfect ordering. So we run archives. Server 3 also could be a spin doctor. Yeah, there it is, spin doctor. That makes a lot of sense. So there might have just been an agenda in there. We want to get those shuffled in regardless if we're going to deep dive. But it's seamless and one unknown card. Now HQ also has more cards in it. We made a successful run, so Marjana breaks cheaper. And now we need to get a click back. I think we want to get a click back so we can go ahead and bravado R&D. If they don't res here, we can always backstitching the Hagen if we need to. But ideally, we are going to just break with the Marjana, the Hagen. So bravado. Okay, wow. It's pretty good to bypass a Bren. Thank you, backstitching. We hit the Hagen's four strength because we have two uh, icebreakers installed. So we break that for five, five credits. Oh, it's because fully break. Never mind. We don't have to break. Um, we don't have to break all the subroutines. Excuse me. So we don't have to break the trash one program subroutine because it's not trash one program. It's trash one that is not one of these types, and those are the only types we have. So we're gonna get uh, what eight credits off of this run after the run's successful. We're gonna get a click back because we've run our mark and because of swift. It's a brown off the top. Can't trash that. We have sixteen credits and still four clicks, which means here we can either install the boomerang on HQ or just install the cat's cradle. Um, the cat's cradle is technically a bit more flexible. It's very unlikely that we're going to end up spending more money on this, but if it has more than one subroutine, is it that big of a deal? No. If it's any sort of biroid, we can click through it. Like what three, I'm, I don't think there's any three, uh, three, uh, or four, like they can't risk tier, but basically if this has a lot of subroutines on it, it'd be kind of a problem because boomerang only breaks two subroutines. We could also consider installing the cat's cradle at this point. They've rezzed. A code gate, so it's not like we're getting huge economic denial in it. A Hagen is perfect. That has two subroutines. We'll break both of them. Why not? And then we can take one or two bullets off into the drafter. Going to cost us two credits. Again, our breaker suite is as low to the ground as possible, so we can get set up very quickly. But they're not particularly efficient. The idea is that we're only breaking so much ice before the game is over, and then we still have two clicks to deep dive. So we can technically steal two agendas if we need to. Which I'm hoping we only need one. We're only seeing seven cards because we know the top is a brun. So here, it's going to be two and two bullets. So we get one card in HQ. Again, there's a chance that we steal an agenda here. They did draw a lot mid-turn. So it's not like this is filter draw. A lot of times you just win here when you're trying to deep dive. Feels good. That's a drafter. Okay, and then we can deep dive here. We'll shuffle the boomerang for sure. And we're looking for a single agenda. There is a Vitruvius. Only one agenda. We'll steal that. Spend a click. No, thank you. We'll just keep our click left. Good game. Wow, yeah, we saw 16 cards with deep dives. Technically, uh, one less because we knew the top of the deck was a brawn. The first one totally whiffed, and we could have won on the first one pretty easily. I think we had enough clicks left over in that turn. But that's the pressure of this deck. We just want to get everything down and very cheesily focus central servers. The kind of the magic dance is knowing when to run the remote servers, when to put pressure on, when to force reses of ice. And I do think we could have forced the reses on the ice in the uh, a couple turns ago when they scored an agenda on the table. It's like really risky for them to score up behind a single ice, but they pulled it off. Thanks for the game. All right, we're deep diving, cheese deep diving. Hey, Future Andre here. Just wanted to let you know that this upcoming game is actually quite different in presentation than all the other games we've put out so far in this series. This was actually a pretty interesting game with a dramatic outcome, but for the interest of the time, I wanted to take a longer game and cut it down to something a bit shorter so we can easily put it right here between some other games. Uh, let me know what you think. You're not going to be seeing every single click and every single turn. Uh, that's going to be cut out because it is a fair bit condensed, but you're going to be seeing the more dramatic and the more explosive moments in this game. Hopefully you can still parse the overall topography of the match. Let me know what you think. This is a new editing style to me, but I decided to try something out and still show off a cool game. So yeah, enjoy. With Sable, we're playing Startup. Um, we're playing against Reality Plus, which is gonna be interesting because they have legitimately taxing ice. But we do have a hand that in some circumstances, as long as they don't put Ender on ice, which, okay, uh, we could turn one deep dive. Uh, we could just Carpe Diem for, to force a res. Like, what are we worried about? Ping is annoying. I'm gonna Carpe Diem HQ. 
We have enough of these. This is potentially a clickless run. It is a ping. Okay. So we take a tag, end the run. Fantastic. Uh, we're going to have to clear that. And they got the two credits off the tag, mind you. The first time a turn we take a tag, they get two cards or two credits. It's their choice. At least a weekend, Blueberry Diesel next turn. Hopefully we get a Mark Summer we could use. A Marjana would be quite nice because then we get into HQ. It's been a couple turns. They've drawn a bit and they haven't scored an agenda out. So let me tell you. Okay. Card in server one. A big part of this deck, indeed, dang it, is knowing when to run and when not to run. We see a mutual favor and a Blueberry Diesel. Could run archives. Yeah, we could consider just running archives mutually for the Marjana. This means we can run HQ. But this might slow the game down because they realize they need ice centrals a bit better. It's a Hansei review. Okay, one influence, big money card. So they do care about money. Maybe they have some bigger ice to res. And then here we can play the sure gamble, which means that if they do crypto crash us, we're not absolutely gutted. Seamless launch. Oh no, it is a crypto crash, isn't it? Oh wow, okay. It's a tomorrow's headline and the retribution of the Marjana. Honestly, don't feel too bad about that. I was much more worried that they'd deal with our economy. We have two Marjanas in the deck. They cost us, I think, zero to install, so that's totally fine. Put down the Cat's Cradle and run R&D. I'm not worried about program destruction. I'd be pretty surprised if they ran like Rota Turret. It's a Gold Farmer classic. We can always get through this without a breaker. So, which means six credits is a lot, but it means that if we install our backstitch and get our mark to be on HQ, we can actually, um, we can deep dive next turn. We can deep dive really well next turn too. We have no agenda points and we're going to need to keep like five to 10 credits to steal two Bologna's. But there's a chance that next turn we can win. It's unlikely, but it's... Uh, you're saying there's a chance. Advance, advance. So that looks like it's a Bologna in the remote server. Do we want to deep dive this turn? Our mark is on archives, which I think answers that question for us. We could always consider just like revotoing server one. We have one breaker. We can't deal with pings, but we can deal with gold farmers. We could draw ones for like a Marjana here. Uh, mutual favor is basically Marjana. Now this actually, we can get the Marjana from our, uh, from our archive. By running archives clicklessly, we can get the Marjana down. I think we can just run server one. I'm worried that we're not going to have enough money to steal the Bologna. And I'd love to steal the Bologna. The wraparound, fantastic. Are they running only barriers and then everything is about trashing the, the, the fractors? Maybe that's why they retributed the Marjana. It's an orbital. Whoa. Okay. Remove tag. Not expecting that. Super cool. They did get an ice on archives. So now if this um, backstitching lands on archives, we're not too upset. And we're like really set up to, to win next turn. So we can go ahead and like bravado HQ and just see. Okay, we could potentially win this turn. It might just be all barriers. We can't steal Bologna here, unfortunately. It's a snare. No! Oh, no. Oh, no. That's 10 influence down a drain. Oh, my God, we got wrecked. We got wrecked so bad. So one in 19 to get our deep dive. And we have no other multi axis in this deck. That snare was so well positioned. And we still have to steal a lot of agendas. We haven't seen Bologna's yet. But again, their remote server doesn't really exist. So I don't know what they need to do here. Like an Amaze Amusements might work. Oh, it's just, it's all barriers. It's like very single. I've seen this sort of deck before where a lot of times like people run only one type of ice and then think I'm just going to trash your barrier, at, your fracture at all costs. And the way that I've seen it a lot better, it's to run like some amount of code gates because then you have a chance of also trashing their decoder. And then that is a win condition. We accessed, oh, a toll boost. So there are code gates in the list. Fascinating. If we lose the Marjana, I think we lose the game because the barriers are just so thick. Okay, this is fascinating because they don't have a spin doctor. So whatever is in server three, like legitimately could be something valuable. Server one, I think we could consider bravadoing there. It's actually a bit fair bit more money. Again, snare is the issue. It is a snare. That's fine. Do we trash it? No, I don't think so. I don't think there's a reason we want to trash this. There's a small chance that server three is a really cute agenda on the table. Unless it's two snares. Considering like we've seen the seamless and they have no more spin doctors. So like, I don't know what it'd be like maybe a Maryland. Uh, Cause they can. Shit on me. Oh no. Oh no! Oh no, we definitely should have run it. Now we have no Marjanas. Okay. I think this might be over. We have no recursion. Oh, that's the other thing this could be. Man, this card is so powerful. You leave it on the table. They could have even seamless launch this thing. So now HQ, like, we can't deal with anything. I think we concede. Because the inside job doesn't get us through here. So we need a mark to be on HQ. Uh, hmm. Let me think. Inside job archives. It's six credits for the gold farmer. We have to inside job through the outermost. And then we have no way to run HQ. 
So we just need to get like every backstitching down. We need to have at least two copies of backstitching, that's for sure. And then we need to inside job this and gain six, and we need another inside job. So we're just hoarding cards at this point. But now also we have to trash Drago, right? Because if they like seamless and trash our backstitching, we have no, we have no game. Yeah, I just don't think we have enough money in our deck anymore. We played all our gambles. Yeah, I think we should concede. Especially because we need to steal Bologna's very likely. So we need to have at least five credits after all this stuff has ended. The biggest issue is like we have no more money. I think I'm just going to concede. Man, that snare. Shit on me. All right, playing against more HB. This is Ysengren SC. This is uh, Jeff. You might actually see him on this channel later this week if everything goes according to plan. Uh, he's streaming right now. So if you want to see the other side of this game, uh, the link will be in the description. Uh, but it's twitch.tv or youtube.com. Ysengren SC. Just like this name. Check it out. He does great stuff. Uh, he's playing Startup. Penny Shaver is way too good to give up, in my opinion. Uh, Metropolitan Grid Streamer Battle. Amina has really good matchups this rotation. It might, it also costs seven credits, which I'm not wild about. Going to take the mulligan. Our opening hand, so again, we just want to like deep dive as soon as possible. We have a bit of economy, a fair bit of economy inside job, but we want to draw a swift, a class act, and a deep dive. So we're going to go mulligan for that. Oh, that's actually really good. There is a small chance that we can deep dive turn one. Now, this would require Jeff to do nothing. Just push in a remote server, get a, whatever the equivalent is of Rashida Yahim and startup. And mind you, we are playing startup. Okay, he iced up his central servers. So we're going to go one, two, three. Uh, we're going to play this whole matchup as if Pinhole isn't a real card. Please be a mark on R&D. Yeah. Okay. This is an issue. It's like, I do not know the value of an unice card on a remote server in this format. I just don't play enough startup. So I'm pretty sure that's a Tranquility or a Maryland. We'll trash it when we have 13 credits. Gamble, gamble. Yeah, I trash my Tranq grid. I dare ya. I dare ya. Yeah, Tranquility makes sense. We're going to pull that down. That's so much money. It's, well, it's probably like 85. With two gambles, it's probably a pretty right play. We'll install this again. We just went through nine credits or eight credits. Uh, we have to discard a card here. We have double deep dive. We don't have an inside job. We don't have a swift yet, but we're getting close here. It's hard to tell. So one of these cards I have to put to the bottom of the deck. They're put up here, which is a bit ugly to see, but we have a jailbreak, which is by no means necessary, but is technically card draw, close card draw. I like that, especially if our mark is on R&D. Please be on R&D, please be on R&D. I think mutual favor is like the least necessary card here. Um, Cause ideally we're not going to install breakers if we can win sooner than later. I do know not know if these PD decks are running Project Vacheron in startup. Again, a lot of this is my cluelessness for startup, so I decided to play more startup to try and figure all this stuff out. Drawing twice. But this is a slow start for me, which is uh, less ideal. RD. There is a chance we can combo off this turn. If we draw into an inside job off of the jailbreak, off of the class act draw, we can deep dive. Click list, run R&D, draw a card, C2. No inside job. Drafter off the top. Okay. Tranquility. No, thank you. Beans. Okay. We can put a boomerang on HQ. Here we have four clicks left, right? So if we just run HQ and run through a drafter, and we've seen one drafter so far, we could deep dive this turn. So I am going to just bravado HQ. I'm just going to bravado HQ, hoping that this is anything besides an enigma. It's a magnet. Okay. Uh, so be it. Maybe next turn. Well, Blueberry, it's a boomerang or a backstitching. Honestly, I kind of like the backstitching because we have a boomerang in hand. We have an inside job. Wow, we were close to being able to deep dive this turn. I don't think there's a way that we could have deep dived elegantly this turn unless we drew. Okay. Issue now here is money. Uh, hopefully our Carpe Diem lands, but we can maybe, we, like we need all our credits to double deep dive. So we're definitely going to need a Carpe Diem. But there's a chance that we double deep dive next turn. We know that uh, Jeff just drew a drafter and Jeff is generally like pretty determined to build up uh, a win and actually build up a board state. So there's a chance we're going to double deep dive. Give me HQ. Fantastic. Fantastic. We want backstitching because we have the boomerang. The shuffles our deck. The bottom of our deck is not too meaningful. Spin doctor. If we trash that, we're going to have less money and we're going to spend at least four credits this turn. So I think they can keep the spin doctor. Run R&D. How many clicks do we have? Oh, we knew that. Are we deep diving? Are we really already? So we can't win, but we can do a single deep dive. Oh, wow. Oh, that's good. 
Next activation command. Oh, they're up to something. Engram flush. Yeah, that makes sense. Sandbox. Steal it. Yes. Sandbox. Okay. That was a bit expensive. But we're on technically on game point. I mean, this is why I want to play two deep dive stable, is because like you just win the game so much of the time. Uh, if we got a click back from Swift, we could have played another one and we'd have to steal a three pointer. It looks like seamless launch advance advance is going to be an off world office. So Sangrid now has money. That being said, still very open to uh, running. Like in theory, we can lose next turn. We don't know what they drew because we shuffled. So they didn't draw the um, what's it called? The uh, tranquility. Uh, we only have five credits and no way to generate economy. Marcus R&D, we can always clicklessly run that. Hopefully we get a Carpe Diem or a Dirty Laundry. We can't really afford to install another class act. Let's get something that's... Okay, let's just run it clicklessly. Sick. <laughs> okay, all right. Let's go. Seems good. Now we're definitely on game point. Okay, uh, I think our win percentage just like took a... Just, just... Sweep. So we could just set up next turn to potentially win we're gonna need probably to if this is marcus and hq that'd be great so we can probably win next turn i don't think we need to install a slip let's draw once if we draw into a jailbreak it's okay uh bravado be really good if we can get our backstitching our mark to be on hq so i'm just gonna take a credit here i think there's a chance you install the swift but we'll see we don't know uh also the sangren drew into an unknown card there we know they have a seamless in hand that's a spin doctor we did see that in hand too that's another card we know so now drawing it to a couple options here. So now if our backstitching is an R&D, we're okay with it. And we can still win here. Archives. Every time. Every time. It needs, if that mark was anywhere else besides archives, we could win this turn very likely. Upgrade in server tube and probably the mana garm. So because this is startup, we do have an out in that we have two Project Vacherons in the list. There are potential worlds where we don't lose this game. Oh my god. So like, what can we do here? We can inside job, inside job, run archives. We could still do it, but it's all our money. Yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? Inside job HQ? Wait. No, Andre. Please. Managarm, no thank you. Inside job R&D? <laughs> so cheesy. Okay, no, this is just bullying now. Fully operational, run our guys. Two credits left to our name again. Look, I'm diving fast. Uh, breach server, you wanna, Jackson, do you wanna do anything? So, here, if he wants, he can spin Doctor in to shuffle uh, two non agenda cards into the deck before we spin Doctor. Or, sorry, before we deep dive. We have two clicks left. I don't shuffle here, I think. Hold on. I need to remember the math here. I need to remember the math here. Whether it's worth it? Isn't it always worth it to shuffle because you're adding two non-agenda cards? Isn't it always? I think giving you the extra card is worse. Oh, because the top card. Right. Because we know what the top card is. So the question is, is it worth adding two unknown cards, but shuffling so that we see one fresh card, but then there's two cards in the mix? So yeah, I think you might not want to shuffle. We ran the math on this a while. Okay, so we'll deep dive. We just want one agenda, please. Uh, Yeah, Vacheron. Yes, 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 we have some time. We have three freaking turns. <laughs> Let's go. So we don't win now. Oh, uh, what are the other cards? We don't want to access any of these. So now we just have to like survive for a couple turns. I forget this card is in startup. Man, I don't like this one. <laughs> and now I, I think there's a big chance that Jeff can win out sooner than we can. We know they have a seamless in hand. Uh, we know that we have no economy. We've spent two inside jobs. So uh, yeah, this is looking actually quite bad for us. Going to have to be some lightning fast score out for me. We can draw up here. Carpe Diem is reasonable. I think you can do it. Vacheron stopping us from this. Drawing a card, drawing a card. They really need to get a card into server two. And at this point, we can just start face checking, right? Hopefully operational. If, if Sangrid doesn't install something here, they definitely lose a fair bit of time uh, because there's only so many turns before this ticks down. We need to draw two. Draw two. And the turn. Great. Okay. 
They have to discard a lot here. They do have a spin doctor. Um, we want Mark on archives if we can get it. Just about anywhere is actually fine because we have uh, the uh, backstitching. Okay, HQ is fine. So we can do credit. Uh, we can run archives first, force a shuffle, I reckon. Oh, nothing. Okay. So now I really want to go HQ. I think we can draw once here. We have all the points we need to win the game. Now, Andre could run HQ, bypass it for zero credits, and we'd be absolutely boned. We've already drawn, right? No, we haven't drawn. We might as well draw. Okay. <laughs> We're so close to doing it. Uh, yeah, no, we do have a plan here, which is score Sandbox, score Vacheron, and we're just in time. And Andre doesn't have a ton of credits. I think if he runs HQ backstitching here. Yeah, I think we're just going to carpet DM, run HQ, just get some pressure on. Uh, continue counter ice. We can bypass it with a backstitching. There's like a. N it's non zero that we lose. Reach server. Okay, okay. Start up. Slow down here. All right. Okay. So again, we have three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We've we've more than half the agendas in the whole deck. <laughs> uh, the stream is loving this. I am not so much, as that was our winning line. Uh, there is only eight agenda points left in the game, and Yasengrin. 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, there's only six more agendas points left in the game. If I'm not mistaken, your Sengren's going to have to s s score every single agenda. Do you have to s s score every single agenda now that's left? <laughs> I'm not so much. <laughs> As that was our winning line. I think we have to score every single agenda. And stealing this 5-3, like, I don't know how many 5-3s they run. I don't think it's three. I think it's two. So now they need even more turns to win out. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, cool. Um, better lucky than good. We're gonna draw into boomerangs and other stuff. Like, do they have enough agenda points to score out? Because it's oh no, it's 18 agenda points, not even 20. So three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. There's only four more points in the deck. Am I out of agenda points? Only four more points. Because it's a 40 point minimum deck, so there's only uh 18 to 19 agenda points. So if I'm not mistaken, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, there's only eight agenda points. So there's two more two point agendas. And one of them's a luminal, the other one's probably an off-world office. Yeah, I actually can't win. Wait. I can't win. Wait, I can't win? <laughs> Don't say that. Don't say, you have to believe. You have 12 points in your score area. I have six more points. Uh, yeah. There's... Only four more points. Oh yeah, there's only four more points. He literally can't win. No, even if I score every agenda, I only reach six. Math is hard. Okay, counting the seven is hard. GG. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh man. And you see, like, Sengren definitely does value, like, trying to have a win and going into the remote server and to score out, which is obviously right. Like, you need to push it out. We got really lucky. We got, like, a single access off R&D was an agenda. That one in, like, five or one in six on HQ was an agenda. But at this point, yeah, there's only four more points in the deck. So even if he scores out all of them, uh, he's only going to get a six points. Wild. Okay. Let's try one more. All right. We're still trying to deep dive turn one. Don't think it's going to happen, but like you just have to play enough hands. Maybe it will happen. We're playing against Floofy, who's on 48 cards. An interesting number. In Startup, playing Ob. I have no idea what Ob can do in Startup. Literally no idea. I think Bass Chiraboga is the big target. Uh, you don't have Boom, so it's not like there's meat damage tech. So maybe it's just value. Um, Envelopment is actually a pretty annoying card. Uh, we can't Boomerang it. We can Inside Job it and Backstitching it. Opening hand is pretty bad. We're going to mulligan this. Jeez, this hand's also really bad. Three Breakers is not what you want to see. Especially breakers we're hoping we don't have to install because using a Marjana to break an envelopment. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Thank you. Icing HQ. Mind you, we do have mark pressure. So sometimes the game slows down where they don't want you to get cheesy hits off the top of R&D. I have no idea. I have no idea what Ob does. So I do not play a lot of startup. So I have, I'm not very sure what, um, <laughs> uh, what Ob is about, capable of. Here we could install a Swift and just go ahead and get a click back and run HQ. Installing this for um for uh two credits is not too bad when you get a click back, but I don't love going down to zero credits. 
This forces a res, hopefully. There's no border control, so I feel like that's one of the strongest op cards, but that's only in standard, so maybe we can get away with this. It's a sandstone. Okay, not too bad. High strength, not too bad. There could be a spin doctor in server one or server two, so let's run R&D first. It's click list, and we can see a card here. We can consider drawing. It's a Mavirus. Cool, <laughs> cool. I will trash that. Um, click list, not too bad. Uh, here we could run server one or server two. Let's go check out one of these. Mavirus is really cool. It purges viruses when we access it. It's a regolith. Definitely don't want them to have that. Server one. Maybe it's another regolith. It's a wall to wall. We don't have that. We'll click for a credit. We'll both be uh, struggling. We'll both be clicking for credits for a couple turns. We don't have a very like stable economy. Luckily, we do have a couple economy cards we can play on low credits. Things like um, Carpe Diem and, and Dirty Laundry are fantastic. But uh, generally, like we don't have that much economy in the deck. This deck is only meant to have so much economy that it can get up to uh, speed. Uh, that it can get up to do its um, its thing, which is deep dive you a couple times. I'll draw again. I'd rather Carpe Diem here. Archives is our mark. We could run it clicklessly. It doesn't really do anything. But next turn, ideally, we Blueberry Diesel into a Carpe Diem or into a Dirty Laundry. And then maybe Sure Gamble. Maybe we'll click for credits. But we'll see what we can get from this uh, can of Diesel. That's for sure. They're not doing too much. The Regolith is probably where a lot of their money is. Um, they could go ahead. And sometimes actually not running is correct. Because if they want to extract this for a two cost, they gain six credits. Sometimes that's the right thing to do just to get economy. Here we have a Boomerang or Swift. We definitely don't need the Swift. And our mark is on R&D. So we could just run R&D to force a res. At seven credits, if they res a trebuchet, we lose our Swift. Otherwise, if they res like an Afshar, it's a bit annoying. I think Afshar is like the big blowout here. There's no Mouseless. There's Hordum. If they res an envelopment, we don't mind. I'm going to run R&D. I don't know what this could be. I, I, I'm really not very good at knowing what startup threats are. It's an ice wall. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, this is kind of ugly. I think we're going to end up throwing out a Marjana. Or we could just install one here. If we install one here, they understand they need to ice this up again, which is not something we want to show them. So I think we're just going to go ahead and throw out a Marjana and click to five. This is a bit risky because they do have cards like Stavka. Uh, they also trebuchet in the format. So there is a real threat of program destruction um, in um, in startup. Install Vance Vance, Hostile Takeover. We have a bad publicity. They get seven credits, though. Keep thinking we have Class Act. All right, we can dig out of the hole. We can just do gamble, gamble into backstitching. Now we just need to draw into deep dives. We also need to install some amount of programs. Like maybe it was actually wrong to throw out the Marjana because it's very likely that they're running SDS drone deployment in this format, which means you need to feed them a program. We have Boomerang. We can just run this, right? Government subsidy. They have a lot of money too for punitive. So like there's a chance that we need to install our cat's cradle Boomerang run this remote server. Archives is our mark. Let's draw for a run event. That's fantastic. So this is gain a click. And three credits because we get one from our mark. There's a virus in there. Okay. So now we can install both of these pretty comfortably and run server four. If this isn't an development, admittedly, we're not getting through it. Maybe we want to install the Marjana instead. But if this is an SDS drone deployment, okay. I think this is going to be a wall to wall. At least we'll use our bad publicity. So far, only barriers. Oh, it's a Managarm. Okay. Breach server. Here we could pay five credits. I don't think we're going to. That's a lot of money. And if that's there, that means they're not protecting themselves from deep dive. A class act would be fantastic. Clickless economy would be fantastic. But this has been like a really rough matchup in terms of like we're just trying to pressure them so they feel uncomfortable because we're not drawing into our class act. We're not drawing to deep dive. We do have a breaker, though. And the fact that we threw out a Marjana makes them think either that we have an extra Marjana as a backup breaker because it's not a breaker you see that often or we have a second one in hand. So they can't feel too safe about this. I think the easiest way for our deck is to deal with Mana Gurm by spending clicks, considering we're pretty good at getting clicks back. Not that our mark can ever be on this remote server, but if we play a run event, we get the click back immediately, not after the run is finished, which is quite nice. So that if we end up like Carpe Dieming this or, oh, not Carpe Diem, that doesn't work, but like Dirty Laundering this potentially could work out. So we will also see no cards that are inherently trashable besides um, the regolith does trash things or itself. This is the problem where we kind of have to put our money where our mouth is. HQ is the mark, uh, mind you, the Marjana. This loses a strength when we encounter it. So this would be five strengths of the Marjana. That's four, five, six credits, maybe five credits. So I think they can get an agenda here. That's another cradle. Class act, we probably just install these two and call it a day. Seems like a good hand. Still three deep dives and 27 cards. We generally want to steal one agenda off the table sooner so that we don't have to rely on deep dive to do everything for us. Advance, advance, advance. Let's see if it's an Azev or it's above the law. Oh, disgusting. Get a trash or resource so bad. Taking us eight credits down. That's fine. I honestly don't know what we were more worried about, which one we'd be more upset about getting trashed. So if we bravado R&D, do we backstitching an ice wall? That feels terrible. But here we could like bravado R&D, backstitching. Yeah, I feel like we could do that. Like we might as well get value from our cards because it gains us two clicks, right? Admittedly, we can't, we can only trash one cost cards here. 
but we'll bypass an ice wall. You don't see that a lot. And there's a sandstone off the top. So only barriers so far. I wonder if they're going to like retribution and trash our stuff. Uh, okay, now we have still good money. We have a sure gamble. We can draw. We get the filtered card draw, a boomerang, or a revolver. We haven't seen the sentry yet. I'm going to bottom the revolver. Here we can draw once more. Uh, jailbreak, we can wait until we get a good uh, mark. In theory, Jailbreak HQ is, I don't know if it's going to work out that well. They've scored two agendas so far, but if they're running one pointers, they generally have a slightly higher agenda density than what you might be used to. So I'll just play the Madrana down. Oh, we have one more click. Yeah, of course. We'll draw a last click. Feels bad. Oh, we don't need another copy of Swift. I do want to keep another copy of the Cat's Cradle just so that if we hit an SDS drone deployment, we have an agenda we can feed it. But I don't know what their agenda suite is. There might be on just a lot of three twos. Maybe they don't have SDS drone deployments because Azef protocol, Azef protocol, I think is the correct way to say it. Um, is really, really quite good in this ability where the cost to trash a card is not that big of a cost. There's also a chance getting a revolver down was just worth it. So we don't have to like really sweat against Stavka. There's the extract, extracting the ice wall to get a zero cost card. What is that? Like a spin doctor in this format? Yeah. Spin doctor. So clickly gain six, draw a spin doctor on the table. Draw two is so good, man. Extract is so wild and op. So now hopefully they draw into something big. And as soon as they get down like a, an unresed ice, like we have to respect Stavka and, and Trebuchet. So we can't like just run it. We can't face check anymore. Upgrade on R&D. Not sure what that could be. A second mana garm. If they res that they have to trash the other one, maybe I'm a virus. But it's a bit dodgy. HQ is our mark. I think we're pretty fine. Like because they drew two with the spin doctor that we can just do boomerang into jailbreak. I like that. Like this is such a good card. It puts on pressure at the same time. It gets us our filtered card draw with class act once per turn. It gives us a click back because of the run. and um it sees multiple cards it gives us like pressure which i love it class act or carpe diem or mutual favor um we have to bottom one of these mutual favor does get us a revolver which is nice carpe diem is money we have another econ card in hand and we have bad publicity i'm gonna take the mutual favor just because we can put a revolver on the table regular from hand we trash that for two credits it's annoying to trash cards while there's a spin doctor on the table we access an afshar that's gonna end up on hq that's our first non barrier we've seen this game so far i probably shouldn't have trashed though they had 17 credits honestly that couldn't have been the right trash. I did not consider how much money they had. That's probably wrong. Um, yeah, I, I actually don't like that in retrospect. A backstitching is nice. Our money is a bit low. Uh, I don't want to dirty laundry this turn. Ideally, we get value with Swift. We can just run the Spin Doctor. Um, it only costs us one to trash. They probably end up using it. Yeah, I think we should trash this first before running HQ because if we do trash the trashable, that's worth recurring. Like, this is not optimal ordering. Uh, this server falls apart. It's no longer a successful or unsuccessful run, so we don't want to like dirty laundry that for sure. And our economy is actually kind of bad, especially if we want to install a revolver. Like we're down to four credits. I don't think we can do that. Extract and subsidy. OK, we'll draw once more. We have a deep dive. OK, so not hitting any agenda so far. So we saw an Afshar and a Regolith. We trashed the Regolith. There's no way. That's right. Loopy's drawn up. Second ice on HQ, probably the Afshar. Cost them four to res. I don't know how many upgrades there are in startup. What are all these upgrades? HQ is our mark. That's a bit awkward. Uh, this thing is quite expensive to run. I think we just have to get like dirt. Uh, I was going to say daily cast. Yeah, we just need to get economy on the table. I don't know what we're doing here. Like we're really floundering and they have defensive upgrades. Like I, I don't think we have a big chance here because we our deck does not have the economy. Like we can barely get through ice. And then if there's more money to be spent, like I, I don't think that's happening. Uh, Chrisium grid is very likely and Chrisium grid stops a deep dive. I, th I think we have very little chance to win in this game. Chrisium grid means the run isn't successful. So we don't get Sable. It means that we don't get our triggers like dirty laundry. A uh, Swift doesn't care, but most importantly, Deep Dive needs a successful run on every central server. So, yeah, it's going to be quite bad. Okay, card and server four, we probably want to run it. Mark is on HQ again. Ugly. If it was archives, it's actually pretty good because we can mutual favor out for a breaker um, or just to save money on the Marjana. I think we just dirty laundry archives. It's clickless. Oh, the Mavirus, of course. Is it Mavirus or Mavirus? I hope it's not Mavirus. Here we can run server one. We probably want to inside job it just because we are very scared of Stavka. It also lets us deal with development really cheaply. And at that point, we'll still have seven credits, uh, six credits. So we can probably pay two clicks. If this is anything else besides an agenda, I think we're going to concede. They might not res here just because if we inside job an ice wall, it's like not an immense amount of value. It's like, I don't think you res there. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. We played two run events in this turn, which is a bit ugly. I'll spend two clicks. We'll access the card first. It's an Azef. And it's a mana garm. We're going to trash that for two credits with a bad publicity. Okay. We have to keep drawing just to make sure that we have, um, you know, something to threaten the table because we're going to have to run a lot. We're going to have to steal probably four agendas. And I don't think we're going to be running centrals that easily anymore. Third ice. Yeah. I think at this point, like our, our deck cannot keep up with three ice. The fact that we can't put on central server pressure means they can do this because just Chrism grids alone, like are enough. We don't have overclock in the list. Even icing up archives is nice. 
Because we can't just like dirty laundry, clicklessly gain a credit card in a remote server. Okay. Seven credits. Uh, not much to do here. Mark his archives. The problem is if we run, like we don't have a good reason to run. It's a jailbreak. I think we're going to keep the jailbreak just because it's a bit of pressure. Very likely be in the, another agenda in server four. Could also be like a spin doctor. At this point, there'll be one, two, three, four agendas and 20 cards. That's kind of what you'd expect. This deck is probably running more agendas than, than you think. If we run archives here, like it doesn't give, give us much. So I think we can just like daily cast click for credits. They've already scored the one above the law. And it's just really hard that we have to play around Stavka and Trebuchet to some extent. So maybe they like see this launch out here or something. Oh, wow. Another ice. Uh, if that's a drone deployment, it's pretty scary because if they drone deployment our Marjana, we're in a really bad spot. Question is, can we ever deal with four ice? R and D is the mark um, again, uh, if successful. So Chrism Grid and R and D is going to deal with this pretty well. With eight credits, how much stuff can they possibly res? How much stuff can they res? Astavka is four. I think that's largely it, right? We might as well run R and D here, force a res because if they res here or Chrism, right? Like they're resing less on the remote server. I think we actually jailbreak R and D too because now it's like click positive because they were making a run event. Because if they res a Chrism here, then they only end an ice, right? They have way much less money for this remote server. Yeah, right. I'm hoping. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. Yeah, there's a Chrism grid. Okay, so now they have way less money, but we're not going to get a successful run trigger off of either Sable or off of the jailbreak. So not amazing. We're still seeing a single card. It's still technically clickless because it's a run event. We also don't draw our card, which is technically like a card and a half. Ganked. Oh, disgusting. So they're definitely running like Stavka. Who do you? If we trash, we, I don't think we can afford the Chrism. We could maybe trash this for two credits. Unlikely. We also can't mutual favor because we didn't make a successful run because this is a Chrism grid, mind you. All it does is it can, makes the run not be considered successful. I don't think we can trash this. Maybe that's a ganked on HQ, honestly. Now they only have five credits. I don't. Okay, let's find an inside job. We're actually, we can move a deep dive. I think moving deep dive to the bottom of the deck is right with a Chrism grid on our R&D. Oh, uh, we have to bottom one of these. Okay. I think we do credit, credit, inside job, remote. We also didn't make a successful run, so Marjana is going to cost a pretty, uh, pretty penny. So now they have to res at least three ice. For five credits, that's not probably possible. Especially because the cheaper the ice is, the more likely we can get through it. Like, tithe would be kind of annoying here. If this is an SDS, we have a chance. But I think they mismanaged their economy a bit. Like, that was a, like ice installs are expensive. That costs three credits to install this card. There's a chance we're inside jobbing another ice wall. It's an SDS. Okay, we have to trash this Kratz Cradle because we only have one Marjana. All right, on game point. We can do this. We have to believe in ourselves. They drew a card off of R&D that I've already forgotten what it was. Oh, ganked. It's a ganked. So they drew another card. They only have five credits. I think if they don't get a lot of credits, like I do think we can consider a bravadoing server four. But again, the issue is Stavka. HQ is now the mark. I think we actually just bravado HQ. We bravado HQ because there's a chance there's an agenda here. It's pretty unlikely. And it's clickless and it gives us money. We're not using the bad policy very well, but we have so many ways to deal with ice. Oh, it's an F sharp, of course. Okay, so thinking. If we bypass the... I don't think we bypass this. We just lose one bad publicity, you know. So it's going to end the run. We could have put down the Cat's Cradle first, honestly. Still four clicks. With four credits, they can res a Stavka. Do we risk a Stavka? Do we risk a Stavka? No. It'll cost us the whole game. Pinwheel Threading is interesting. Don't want to risk a whole game from a Stavka. <sighs> okay, what else can we do? We could do Cat's Cradle run HQ. We know one of the cards in HQ. No. How many jailbreaks have we played? Um... We have played two, so we have no more multi-access besides deep dive. So the Chrysium needs to come down or we need to camp the remote. Okay, let's keep drawing. That's good. That's actually quite good. So this gives us some safety to Stavka. Pre-installing it obviously is a bit ugly. I don't think we pre-install it here. I think we'll just install the cradle and call it a day. They only have four credits. Mind you, uh, this is why, again, extract is such a good card. They can just say, I'm going to extract the ice wall, which is not very taxing for us, and then get a spin doctor and six credits. They've... Have something in the remote server. Pinhole threading is actually kind of interesting. It looks like it's another uh, toss. So they're also on game point. We now have two bad publicity. So running is a bit easier. HQ is the mark. HQ is the mark. How do we deal with that? I think we have to deep dive to win. I'm worried that HQ has another Chrysium on it, which would be a nightmare. It would be a total nightmare. Here, if we run this, we break it for one credit. So it's about the sandstone. Hmm. So I think we can consider boomeranging this. Uh, we can also consider dirty laundering HQ, but if that's a Chrysium, like it's it's quite bad. So I think we would uh, carpe diem HQ. We're on HQ, getting click back, continue encounter. 
So the two cards we lose to this is bad publicity and we break for one. We don't need to backstitch that. We can only break one of these subroutines because it's on HQ. So we'll lose the bad publicity, largely. Technically, we've already spent one of them, but it's all the same. The ganked here also wouldn't be too bad if we hit it because none of these targets are awful. Ganked into an Afshar, like it costs us three to trash it. It costs us two to hit the Afshar, whatever. Uh, no, thank you. I want to keep this so that our marks on R&D we can actually run. It is a Chrysium. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So this is, I think we're going to give up on the deep dive. So we have to win off singles. Oh, never mind. Nice. Nice. We did it. We had to believe in ourselves. Good game. I have three deep dives. Oh my God. Chrysium is the worst. All right. So the agendas were in there. Um, but yeah, Chrysium is really hard to deal with for the deck. We just don't have enough money. Yeah. That kind of, that kind of, that kind of, that kind of spoils it. Good game. Yeah, that's tricky. We have to get lucky. We played all our multi axis and the deep dives are dead. So that kind of shows you what the sort of archetype really struggles against. And just like having like really big punishing face checks on ice, like Stavka for four credits can be a seven strength ice like that. If we trash enough of our breakers, we lose. Admittedly, we did trash our own Marjana, which is probably wrong because in this matchup with SDS drone deployment agenda that steals or on steal or score trash as a program, you do want to keep redundancy because uh, if we run out of these, like it's a real big problem. Thanks for the game. All right, playing startup, trying to cheesy deep dive turn one. Uh, we're playing against uh, Restoring Humanity. 44 cards, only 18 to 19 agenda points. Wants archives to have cards face down in it. Now, this hand's actually quite good. We have an early revolver, so we're not scared of those sentries that do uh, net damage. It's actually like a really difficult matchup to do a deep dive in because if you're running central servers, you're risking hitting anemones or uh, snares, and then you lose the deep dive in hand. So uh, it's going to be a bit rough. They took a mulligan. Oh, ideally, we want to have, obviously, a deep dive, but we also want to have Class Act and Swift. Those are two big setup cards for the deck. Just also, like, a daily cast is nice enough because uh, our deck doesn't have a lot of economy. It's not built for the late game. It needs to win before the mid game. Uh, this hand is, like, almost really good. I feel like we can mulligan into worse, but, like, in this hand, what do we do? We sure gamble, install the revolver, draw, draw, something like that. Draw first. Yeah, we'll keep it. It's fine. But I don't think we're going to be deep diving very soon. Maybe have it at all. Like, it depends on where the damage goes. Cool thing about this ability is that like we sometimes clicklessly can go and check archives. And mind you, there's a lot of like really nice Jinteki cards um, that came out in Midnight Sun that we haven't had the I haven't played against a lot of them. Best of luck. Have fun. So the idea is that if our mark ends up in archives, we can clicklessly go for the flip and they won't be necessarily gaining credits on the next turn. Also going to watch out for Regenesis. Pretty good. But yeah, Anemone, other stuff like that can be an issue. Sprint, a nice way to filter HQ. Generally, you want to ice up your centrals against um, against Sable, just because if I do get a mark on R&D and HQ, we can click see run and see a card for no clicks. Pretty good. They did. They do have an econ card playing a hedge fund going up to nine. So now they can at least dice up one thing if they need to. Oh, just straight into remote server. This is quite interesting because in startup, there's no Obacata protocol here. We'll open with the sure gamble. The question is whether we draw If we draw. We can draw into a Carpe Diem or draw into a jailbreak. I'll draw once. But sometimes it's a bit ugly because if you draw sooner, um, like sometimes you want to see what you hit. And if you hit a snare, you don't want trash cards on hand. We'll run R&D clicklessly for sure. They sprinted, so it's unlikely there's a lot of agendas in HQ. Uh, we'll trash the spin doctor. We'll run back. I don't know what else we're doing. Maybe setting up. Well, rain, it rains the pours, I guess. Running last click, we could float a tag. Two spin doctors down. If that's a spin doctor in server one, just click for a credit. Like what is server one? Like a bladder wart? A moon pool? Last click, let's hit a snare. Sandbox, okay, paid out. Just some good aggression. Got a click back, very powerful. So this sting? House of Knives, wow. Okay, so it looks like they're actually trying to hurt us. R&D is a markless draw into a jailbreak. Clickless run. We can take the net damage here. None of these cards, if we lose it, are like game breaking. So like, I'm okay running into this House of Knives. Mind you, they can ping one damage at a time. We lost the Cat's Cradle. That's one of our decoders. There's a snare. If they trash that, I'm okay with this. We're going to trash that for sure. But now they don't have an economy. We did lose a revolver. We have two of each of these breakers, but a lot of ways to bypass ice cards like inside job or backstitching. At this point, with only two credits, um, I don't think there's anything that kills us, right? Like Sting is going to be one damage. So I'm going to draw up here and then we can just start running. Because they can't afford another snare. I don't think there's agendas in here. We lost a backstitching. That's fine. The regolith. Uh, we do need to take that down. That's one way for them to bounce up an economy if we run once more and they give us the last house of knives it will be a problem for us uh because then they can score a blood in the water out we do have a carpe diem which is pretty good if they click twice for credits they can threaten snare out and so much of this game is them being able to threaten snare out 
We want to make sure that we have an, at least three cards in hand. Mark is R&D, like it's been anything else. Hero Blueberry Diesel. It's a mutual favor or another diesel. We'll take another diesel. We don't need breakers on this board state. So a Carpe Diem R&D, clicklessly. See if they want to hit us with the House of Knives. Loss of Boomerang, okay. That's a hit point that comes back. It's an Engram Flush off the top. Another good card to Boomerang. Um, five credits, they could have hit a Snare. They're out of House of Knives tokens. If we want to commit to the daily casts, we're going to have to clear the tag, unfortunately. We can go ahead again. It's a Marjana or Dirty Laundry. Uh, we'll take the... We don't need a Fractor. Here, we can just Dirty Laundry HQ. Last click, if we hit a Snare, it's a bit ugly. Um, Hante Review means they can get a lot of credits there. So they have a way to recover from credits. They have an Engram Flesh and a Hante in hand. I think that's all we know. Maybe we saw another card off R&D. I don't remember. But uh, easy board state to deep dive off of. That's for sure. And it'd be potentially quite good because you're not accessing any of their traps. You're dodging snares if you're choosing what to access. But again, hitting a snare in HQ can be a problem. If they haunt, say it's technically a six credit card because haunt review uh, requires you to trash a card as long as you have a card in hand. So you'll get your ability on restoring humanity. But hey, we've got three clicks back. Like we've played 15 clicks. We've basically nearly got a free turn. Opening with a Hansei, discarding a card into archives, 10 credits is a lot. Ice on R&D, probably the Engram. Which, mind you, you can just go through an Engram in theory. Now, if they call event, you'll lose the deep dive in hand, so you generally want to break it. We have an inside job for that if we need to. And here we love an HQ mark. Uh, they're taking that back. That's all good. You can always draw first. Okay, it looks like Engram might be on HQ. And another ice. Okay, so one unknown ice for sure. Um, HQ is the mark. We'll draw, draw here. I think we're just going to run archives to deny them the credits. See what card they discarded. It gives us some information as well. Send a message. Whoa. They might have been sneaking out here. Uh, oh, Pharos. Whoa. Uh, okay. That is something you can technically inside job through. And even Boomerang. Uh, they might be uh, looking to sneak out, um, what's it called? The 3-1, the Regenesis to score this. But we're on game point now. I'm just going to click for a credit because I'm worried about punitive. And I think with 11 to 12 credits, it's not a huge surprise. Like, I, sorry, it's not like a huge differential, so we're probably going to be safe. Let's see what the Gardener has. Clicking to draw. And the cool thing is if they're playing a punitive deck, once we get over this hump, like, uh, you don't have to worry about punitive largely any, any time else. They found their last spin doctor in server two, drawing to another Hansei review, 16 credits, card, unknown card. Let's get an archives uh, mark, R&D mark, okay. So they drew a fair bit and they discarded the card. So they could be discarding an agenda here. I think we can just take our time though. Because they have a lot of work um, for us to, um, to beef it. We'll draw once. Sure Gamble is good. I think we'd rather run Archives than Spin Doctor just to get a flip. There are no traps in Archives that trigger. And this might, on its own, flip the Spin Doctor. They might, like, recover an agenda here. Not, maybe we just denied them a credit next turn. Okay. Moonpool. Spin Doctor still on the table. Um, I think we probably just want to Sure Gamble trash the Spin Doctor. And if we don't install any cards, like, there's very little tag punishment we're worried about. We didn't run our mark, though. And if we have to break this with Marjana, it's going to be bad. Hopefully we don't have to. We did see a moon pool being discarded, a really interesting card. Um, they need to have a lot of things to line up to this for this to be good. It is quite expensive. Ice on Archives, likely to be a Pathonymous. And what did they spin Doctor back in? I don't think I paid attention. Two more spin Doctors. That tracks. So we could inside job this remote server. Our mark is again on... Has it only been on R&D this whole game? We'll draw once. Jailbreak could be good on R&D. They have a single card in HQ. I think we can just inside job server three. The issue is that if it's like a snare and this is um, an anemone, an that'll be five damage. So we could draw once more. Uh, Swift is good. Whatever, we'll just go. But a single I uh, ice remote server is like pretty easy for criminals to deal with with either boomerang or inside job. They probably just don't res here. Unless it's an anemone and they want the damage. Breach, it's a moon pool. Don't know what they do with that. Feels really bad to play the Swift after we did that. Probably a misplay for sure because we could just click for a credit that we did that. Yeah, why didn't we install this first? I think because of damage. Yeah, let's convince ourselves it was because of damage. And we have to actually clear the tag at some point. I might as well just do it now. Ideally, we would clear the tag and play daily cast in the same turn, just because this takes a certain amount of turns to pay out. And we need that money. We also haven't seen them play any advanceable traps yet, which is something we're worried about. Because Moonpool is really good with advanceable traps. And if they install advanced advance and we call it wrong, like it's suddenly a different game, even though we're on five points. In terms of ways to deal with ice that aren't breakers, we have played a single inside job. We've lost a boomerang. We have a backstitching in hand. They just drew three times. Didn't discard a card. So Jailbreak HQ seems quite good. Issue, oh, Archives is our mark here. Issue is that we have no way to get in there. So this might be a turn where we just get Economy. Oh, I think we just do Boomerang into Jailbreak. Okay, then I'm installing the Swift. I've learned. 
An enemy could be an issue here. An enemy into like a snare could be a problem, but we do draw a card. Okay, we knew that was an Engram Flesh. I forgot. That was the one ice we knew. Let's see what they call here. They call event. Um, well, I guess we don't have to break that. We got to show them our hand though. If we don't want to break this, but they're calling event and we have resource program resource. So we can save the boomerang on this and come back later. This card, basically they name a type and then we reveal their grip and then they can trash a card of the named type. Unfortunately, they missed. There's a Hanse and another Engram Flush. Okay, we'll just install the daily cast. Actually, installing the backstitching might be correct there. Just to get a bit more pressure on. Uh, because we still have three deep dives, right? And 24. So one in eight chance. And if we deep dive, we probably win. The issue, this is we can get through. We're already set up to get through that. We need the backstitching for Pharos. And then we're going to need like something for archives. So we're assuming this is a Bathonomous, but it might not be. This is potentially scary. 18 credits is a lot. We only have four. Phenomenal. Card in server three. All right, we'll draw here. I don't think we're going to end up running it. That's a deep dive that we could set up. We're going to need some money again. This we're going to need a backstitching on the table. So I think we can just credit install install. Uh, running R&D would be nice. We have an inside job actually. So we can definitely set up the deep dive. The question is how soon can we do it? Ah, shit. It's either the daily cast or the backstitching. If we install the backstitching, next turn will be on five credits, which is not enough. Um, we're hoping that the mark is anything else besides HQ because we can boomerang this, backstitching that. Wait, how much is that? It's a four credit play. Actually, we might be able to pull it off, right? Because if I'm not mistaken, we're going to be on five credits. It's two credits to the inside job. We just need the backstitching to be on anything else besides HQ and we could deep dive out. Triple advance. House of Knives means the backstitching is not guaranteed. Uh, the deep dive is not guaranteed. Okay, that gets a lot uglier. Oof, okay. How do we do this? Mark is on HQ. That's bad because we can't. We needed to be on R&D archives. Okay, so we'll just keep setting up. Uh, we could consider just dirty laundering HQ. Let's draw another card in our hand just so that they have a less chance. Like we want to weed out these House of Knives tokens. We haven't lost a deep dive yet, no. So we'll try and weed out these out. We'll run HQ here. Again, there's a chance they have snare. That's kind of just how it works. So we just have to survive this. It's a one in five chance. They can only use one per run. And this just doesn't have damage, which we have no way of preventing. So good luck. This might do get to click back. They hit the inside job. Oh shit, that was also important. Uh, no. Let's see what they call. We don't have events. Oh, no, we do have an event. Excuse me. It's a very important one, too. They named Hardware. I'm going to boomerang this. Not that we need the Swift, but I just want to have more cards in hand just so we can dodge the House of Knives token. So while this would only trash the Swift, which is a unique card that we don't need, uh, we're going to keep going. 15 credits. Another Hante review. Shuffle the boomerang back. Three more clicks. Okay, keep going. Uh, jailbreak is a bit risky on a turn that we're trying to like deep dive, considering that it uh, it can hit a snare really easy. We want to get an inside job. Okay, the game's gonna be a bit longer, so we can definitely get more money off the daily cast. But now we're like really dancing around this. I wish the deck had a bit more clickless card draw. Um, I would love to see like Earthrise Hotel because we can't draw and do combo in the same turn that easily. They need to push into remote server. So far, we've seen three, four, five, six, seven agenda points out of probably eighteen. They probably have something in hand. It's all advanced, advanced. Like, I don't know how they scored the send of messages. Ooh, upgrade. Uh, probably Anoetic Void. Makes a lot of sense with their ability. Don't think we can run that unless we get a pinhole, but I think our pinhole's on the bottom of the deck. We did just shuffle with Boomerang, so their pinhole is technically anywhere. But we have a small chance of comboing out this turn. Oh, no, we, we can't. No, we need an inside job or another backstitching. Oh, it's a regular. That's fine. They already have 16 credits, so we don't really care about that. That's fine. We can just keep doing our thing. Archives is the mark. Um, we're just gonna keep drawing and setting up. I'm gonna put them in the revolver. We haven't seen any uh, uh, sentries yet, but this does give us some flexibility. The issue is like, I don't know whether we just run into archives. Like there's a chance that we can do revolver and then like bravado archives. And then in a panic, we backstitching. It's pretty ugly, admittedly. Like we need to, yeah, we just need to get something like that. That's what we need. So here we can install the boomerang on Man, it just depends where this goes. I think we can keep the boomerang in hand and like not show our our hand here, and we can install the revolver so we need we can have it because I, I think we can still install the boomerang with this many one pointers out. I don't think we're gonna need two clicks off of the deep dive. I still think if as long as we play a run event, we'll be okay. So we can throw it here. So again, it's still uh, we have to dodge two more house of knives to triggers. Ideally, we're gonna jailbreak HQ. I know that's a bit difficult, uh, dangerous with snare, but it's the only way for us to like quickly get, clicklessly get card draw at the same time. So like we're gonna have to risk a one and three and then like a one and three, I think. Them just getting money here, like we don't care about, that's fine. Like they could, if they have an anoetic and they had an agenda, they could jam. 
I don't think getting an extra nine credits matters on the board state right now. Okay, so what do we do? We have to play this perfectly. Mark is on HQ. Phenomenal. So I think we install Boomerang on HQ and we jailbreak HQ. We have a one in three of ruining our play here. Okay. They can do one more one in three. And then an enemy on archives, mind you, probably ruins our play. Uh, no. Oh, wait, why do we boomerang this? Wait a second. The boomerang was meant to be for R&D. Oh, I messed this whole play up. I forgot that we, that this was, backstitching was meant to deal with this. Okay, so we're not deep diving this turn. This is a huge mistake. Um, no. Yeah, huge misplay. Oh my god. Oh uh, yeah, that, that was definitely meant to go in R&D. Wait, then how do we deal with archives? I don't know what our plan was. Name events. Yeah, okay. And we won't die to snare here because we'll technically draw a card first off the jailbreak. Angram Flush. Sight sent on. Okay. Cool. That's a sentry. We'll shuffle that back. Uh, that didn't work out the way I thought it would. So we can keep drawing. Maybe we'll just say that we were weeding at the House of Knives tokens. Uh, we can draw once more here. And then I think, oh, now we have two in hand. We feel better. We'll install the class act to mass draw. And we'll install the boomerang on this. Because I don't think they're going to trash this thing. Okay. Now, next turn, we're pretty good. Because we can boomerang this. We can run archives. Hope. I think we'll run archives first, if anything. Fun enough with three deep dives in hand, even if the Ingram flush triggers. Like, they can't trash all of them. That was bad. Draw a card. They're drawing for agendas here. You have to assume that the snares are stuck in hand. Sprint? Okay. Probably can find an agenda off of this. And they're going to discard a card here. Oh, no. Actually, no. Because they still have to shuffle two back. They might not discard a card. But I think we have to start with running archives. Uh, money is an issue. We only have six credits. Yeah, what are we doing? I don't think we have enough money for this. Second iron sun already. That's a problem with the boomerang. Our mark is archives. Ugly. So what do we do here? Now we need this to land on R&D. Uh, do we just install breakers? Like, what is our plan? I'm bravadoing archives. We have this in a panic. With three credits, we can shoot Bathonymous. Which is the ice we're most expecting to be here. It's a size and done uh, that we can shoot as well. Their money doesn't really matter. Let's see what they choose. No matter what, we're going to break it. Naming event. Okay. So it's three bullets. They can still house the knives here. A lot of times you don't want to house the knives when you have more than enough cards in hand. And that is that. So we can have eight credits left. Angram flush we can get through. No, this is awful. What are we doing? At least they're not scoring out quickly. We need, okay, inside job check. One left in the deck. Backstitchings are all done. Boomerangs, two left in the deck. Or one left in the deck, one installed. Yeah, I think we're actually going to have to install breakers. Yeah, you hate that day. Speaking of install breakers, we can mutual favor down. What? <laughs> all of these are awful to break. All of these are so expensive to break. There is a chance that if this is a sentry and it's another site sent on, we break this for two. We break this for free, take a tag, access R&D. We run here. And as long as the House of Knives doesn't hit a deep dive, they can't trash all our deep dives. I feel like pre-installing the boomerang is usually wrong. We'll keep drawing. Diesel, I think we want the, the money here. Because they're not doing anything quickly. They'll probably score out at this point. I do think we want a mutual favor for a breaker. Yeah, let's just get a breaker on the table. But we ran, right? Yeah, okay, it was just being slow. So we install Cat's Cradle. Yeah. This pressures their money technically, but it's just another card. And we'll just keep drawing. We want more cards in hand. Oh, inside job. Perfect. I think we might be set up this turn. Still been lucky on the anemones. An enemy on R&D could be an issue because they could do three damage out of nowhere. An enemy, mind you, is a, a sentry that when they res it, they can discard a card to do two net damage. It's hard to play around that. Again, click with card draw would be so good. It'd be so good to get like two cards off the top. And then we're running with seven cards in hand before we draw. We actually could click to draw. We have enough clicks, I believe, in the turn. Where our mark is is going to be pretty impactful. Um, how much does it cost to break this thing if we need to? Six credits? Yikes. That's not good. Card, this is one of the few cards that's banned in the standard format, but not in Startup. Startup has no ban so far. Install in Server 3. Hanse. Gaining even more money, and they got a credit there. Okay, well, they have a lot of money, that's for sure. R&D is our mark. That is phenomenal. That is best case scenario. Let's run it. If they hit the inside job, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world if they hit the inside job. It's an Engram flush. Okay. Yeah. Floating a tag here. So snare is the bad part. 
We're going to take a tag off the Pharaohs. So we're going to break two of the subroutines. Shuffle Boomerang back into our deck. We just don't want to hit a snare here. We lost one deep dive. Okay, so that's probably as much damage as we're... Oh! No! Feeling good. Feeling cute. Looking cute. Feeling cute. Looking cute. Um... Sick. Oh, we didn't play a run event. Uh, that doesn't matter. Okay, look. We can die to snare. They have one more snare. If we run HQ, we have a small chance of hitting the snare. If we run HQ with the cat's cradle, it costs four, five, six credits. So it puts on five. We have exactly enough money. They could also miss call here. No, they didn't. Perfect. Six credits. Otherwise, we'd lose this. I think we have exactly enough credits to do all this. If we hit a snare here, we lose. We eat flatline. It's fun. Okay, cool. Run archives. We're going to have no money, but we're going to be able to use the revolver. Snare has been so bad tonight. Okay. And we have exactly, oh no, we have three credits. Mind you, I did the math a bit off, but we have barely enough money. Spin doctor to draw. We talked about how this is technically wrong. If you do the math, this is usually wrong. It depends how many cards are in R&D. Oh, and actually, no, that's correct because we trashed the top card of the deck being a snare. So it's uh, unlikely for us. Mind you, it looks like there's agendas in here. Deep dive, please. Oh, and there's a cyberdeck sandbox in there. Oh, GG. Yeah. Oh, GG, yeah. That was close. I was dodging uh, knives the whole time. Add one in there forever. Oh, man, that was close. And there was a sandbox in there and we had to click left. So we could have stole five agenda points um, there. They get a free res here. 69 to 74 credits. That was close. Oh, my God. Nice runs. Thank you. Wire's Edge. Yeah, the run HQ with one card in hand. Like, there's no way around it. Like, you just have to do it. Thanks for the game. I think our opponent like spent a lot of time getting economy when they already had a lot of economy. It's different than standard startup, right? There's not a lot of ways for like diversion of funds. There's not a lot of ways to take money away from the corp. So at that point, I think I, uh, a lot of times they'd, I feel like it'd be more in their best interest to just draw a lot because if they can get an agenda on top of an anoetic, uh, an anoetic void, assuming that it is behind two ice, like we can't deal with it. So there's a lot of times where like you have money and you don't have agendas and it's very easy to say, I'm going to get money. But a lot of times the right play is just draw. Just like panic draw. Like, hey, if you have a, a scoring window, go go capitalize on it. Uh, that was really close. Again, if we hit a snare on HQ, it would be a problem. If we hit a sting, I think that would have just not, I don't think it would have ended us, but it would have ended the deep dive. Um, I can't believe you keep hitting snares. Deep dives tonight, and I don't think all the games are going to be in this video, but I think we lost four or five deep dives off of snares. And yeah, we had another two points in there. Wild. Well, that's the deck. It's super one-dimensional. The economy is not robust. You're trying to get to the early to the mid game. The late game is a bit of a nightmare. And there's a lot of big ways to deal with this deck. Chrysium Grid is a problem. Net damage is a problem. Snare is a problem. Uh, yeah, it can be quite rough. So uh, it's still pretty fun, pretty aggressive. A lot of the HB decks, like you can rush them down if they're not icing up stuff and going turn one server, but uh, that's it. It's pretty cheesy, but it'll work. I still think you can do a turn one. And if you do, let me know. I believe in you. Thanks for watching. Ciao.